Je me présente. My name is Olivier Serrault, and I am a professor of interventional radiology. I manage the interventional radiology unit at the Jean Verdier Hospital in the Paris area. I'm specialized in percutaneous ablations of liver tumors. Vous voyez, euh, et là, ce patient a développé une... You can see that this patient has developed a tumor larger than 40 millimeters in diameter with satellite nodules that are not well confined and in particular located in an area of the liver that with the standard technique would require surgery, a resection of the liver that would be much too large, so large that the patient would not withstand the surgery. Ablation techniques are usually selected for tumors of less than three centimeters. They are rarely used for larger tumors because they often fail. Alors nous sommes équipés de la table angiographie. We are equipped with the GE Innova IGS 540 interventional X-ray system with the needle assist solutions. Et puis aussi nous avons une plateforme échographique Logic 9. And we also have a Logic E9 ultrasounds platform with the XD Clear 2.0. Prior to the procedure, we perform cone beam CT imaging to determine the growth status of the tumor at the time of the procedure. While preparing the patient, we place an identifier on the patient's skin to enable automatic registration of ultrasound and X-ray images during the procedure. We can see our acquisition performed in the room, reconstructed on the AW station. As the tumor was slightly raised in the arterial phase, we are going to synchronize it with the pre-therapeutic MRI to confirm its location. Synchronization is based on the vessels to maintain a good readjustment at the level of the tumor. We can then segment the tumor on the MRI by placing a sphere at the level of the tumor, then ask the software to automatically replicate this sphere on the pre-therapeutic cone beam CT exam. We can then display the sphere on the fluoroscopy to control the relative position of the electrodes with respect to the tumor. With no action on my part, the system recognized on its own performed this re-recording of both volumes. Here is the cone beam CT, the reference image, with the arterial acquisition that we can clearly observe. À l'instar de ce que j'ai fait finalement tout à l'heure, ici je vais faire la même chose, j'ai disposé As I finally did on the cone beam CT volume earlier, here I do the same thing. I will have a 3D GPS marker, a sphere, a region of interest using ultrasound which will be automatically exported, propagated to the cone beam CT reference volume here. We have now placed an electrode using ultrasound mode. We will check its position with respect to the target that we have previously placed in the initial cone beam CT. We check the front and profile view to ensure the 3D position of the electrode around the tumor. We then ensure the continuity of the ablation by measuring the 3D distance between the electrodes using the logic E9. Once all the electrodes are in place, we use needle assist with Stereo 3D to determine the 3D position of the electrodes in the initial cone beam CT. For this, we take two fluoroscopy shots around the patient instead of a complete rotational acquisition. This saves both time and dose. On repère assez simplement les aiguilles dans chacune des vues. We locate the needles quite easily in each view and a red line is automatically displayed by the software to help match up the needles in each of the views. Et donc effectivement, so all of our six electrodes are highlighted by overlays and we send all these trajectories in 3D CBCT volume and we will check this time on cross-section images that we are in the correct position. The needle that will cause real concern is the one that borders the capsule, seen clearly on the bottom of the image. Here it is, G, I think. And we see in this image that it is in the liver but I was not able to see it with the ultrasound. So here we have a good example of the usefulness of combining both types of imaging. If I had only used the ultrasounds, they would have been wrong for the positioning of the last needle. After the ablation, we perform a cone beam CT in the portal phase to assess the thermal ablation margins. 
And we are able to record again, of course, the contours of the tumor as we identified them in pre-therapeutic mode, notably with the MRI. And you realize that this ablation area, this widespread hypodensity, circumscribes the former contours of the tumor. One of the electrodes was completely invisible, not identified by the ultrasound on its own. So by adding the cone beam CT and needle assist solutions, we were able to perform this ablation without forgetting, of course, the Logic E9 platform with the 3D GPS marking tool.